This presentation is all about pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is the second phase of any plant pathology study. We already briefly covered about the first phase, which is known as etiology. In pathogenesis, uh, we uh, try to look all the events which ultimately lead to the disease. The word pathogenesis originated from pathogenicity. So the focus is the pathogen, how it reached to the host, uh, how it enter into the host, uh, uh, its mechanisms of establishment and then reproduction and how it leave the infected host and reach to the new healthy uh, host. All these events are covered in pathogenesis. If you look at your screens, uh, you find two grapes plant. Uh, the plant on the left side showing uh, disease symptoms, but the disease is only confined to a single leaf while the plant on the right side is disease free. So what choice is left for the pathogen uh, to remain uh, confined to the same leaf and uh, never comes out from the comfort zone. And when this uh, leaf die, the pathogen will die. And the other choices left for the pathogen uh, to attack uh, new or the healthy leaves of the same plant or try to reach out uh, to the leaves of another plant which is growing a little bit far away. To achieve this objective, uh, pathogens uh, usually go under two kind of movements. One is known as uh, active movement and other is known as passive movement. Active movement uh, where the pathogen by its own self moves towards the healthy part of the plant or the healthy host. And uh, in case of fungi, this can be done uh, with the help of zoospores. Not every fungi produce zoospores, but some of the fungi produce zoospores. And these zoospores have the flagella. And uh, with the help of the flagella, fungi swim and reach out to the uh, host. In case of bacteria, they have the flagella. And uh, flag uh, with the help of flagella, they also reach out their potential host. Nematodes don't have the flagella, but they have the muscles. And these muscles help them uh, to reach their potential host. Uh, what is the story in case of virus? Uh, virus uh, don't have uh, any kind of flagella and the muscles are also absent. So viruses never underwent any kind of active movement. Rather, they uh, follow the passive movement. What is a passive movement? Passive movement is uh, uh, with the help of uh, an agency or a carrier. In case of fungi, the agency is uh, wind, water, soil, tools. While in case of uh, uh, bacteria, the agency is, uh, agencies are again wind, water, soil and the tools. Uh, nematodes, because they live inside the soil, uh, usually they, not, they are not dispersed by the uh, uh, wind and uh, but still they can move from uh, infected to healthy uh, plant with the help of water soil and the tools uh, most of the viruses uh, move from infected to healthy uh, plant with the help of vector and uh, usually this vector is insect when pathogen by any means come in contact with its protein uh, with the plant this process is known as inoculation Inoculation were derived from inoculum and the inoculum is uh, basically any part of the pathogen uh, which is capable of causing the disease. In case of fungi, it could be a spore, hyphae, mycelium or the fruiting body. If they reach uh, uh, to their uh, potential host, they can uh, start the disease cycle. In case of nematode, it is egg, juvenile or the adult. Uh, in case of bacteria, the whole bacterial cell, while in case of virus, the whole virus particle. Uh, this is the one of the reasons why the fungi cause most of the diseases because uh, there is a diversity in their inoculum. Uh, it could be a spore, it could be a hyphae, it could be a mycelium or obviously it could be a fruiting body. The individual unit uh, of the inoculum is called a propagule. The story of pathogenesis is very simple. There are two characters. One is pathogen and other is the potential host. So the first character tries to reach to the uh, second character means pathogen tries its level best to reach its potential host. And this uh, it can be done either by itself or it can be done uh, by a passive movement with the help of some kind of agency. 
but once it reached to the potential host it means it reached to its final destination so can we say that this story is completed no story uh, whether it is a human story or whether it is the story of pathogen is so simple it always have twists and turn in case of uh, human stories uh, these twists and turns uh, either due to some kind of uh, relatives or due to friends or due to accident but we now are desperate to see what are the twists and turns in the story of the pathogen as we are talking about a pathogen which initially infecting the leaf of a grape plant so if this pathogen falls on a healthy leaf of a grape plant then there is disease no issue no twist no turn but by chance if this pathogen fall on the grape plant but not on the leaf but instead on bark then there would be no disease so it means that the pathogen are very choosy when it comes where to live in another scenario uh, if this pathogen falls on the leaf of an other plant which don't belong to grape family then what will happen uh, there would be no disease so many of you may ask why there is no disease uh, the other uh, leaf uh, is a leaf of plant and this is a pathogen why pathogen likes some plant and why it dislikes other it is a very simple question to ask but it is the most toughest quest question to answer scientists for the last 100 years trying their trying their level best to get the final answer it is a kind of jigsaw puzzle where the information is present but that information in bits and pieces and still uh, the scientists are unable to join it together to complete the picture maybe uh, in the next coming year uh, we years we can get uh, the final answer but do you not think the behavior of pathogen is like us we in our daily life uh, like many people we and dislike many people uh, sometimes we have a very solid reason for likes and dislikes and sometimes we don't have any kind of uh, reason for that so why to blame pathogen because he is small he is tiny after decades of research uh, now uh, people have some answers uh, of this question why pathogen uh, likes some plant and why pathogen not likes other a pathogen only like a plant which produces certain kind of signals and cues and these cues are picked by the pathogen the second criteria uh, pathogen only recognizes a plant uh, its potential host if that plant uh, help the pathogen to attach with it and not only help to attach with it but also allows uh, it to enter into it so if the plant has a very hard structure the pathogen don't like such plant and never develop any kind of association with it the third uh, reason of this recognition is the presence of nutrient each plant produce certain nutrients and that nutrient attracts the pathogen pathogen is very choosy when it comes to nutrient uh, so that is the one of the reason why pathogen choose one plant or prefer one plant over the other the fourth criteria is that the potential host don't produce any kind of antimicrobial compounds so pathogen not fear of uh, of this plant uh, uh, and uh, he knows that if he develop any kind of association with it uh, then it he will not die because that plant is not producing any kind of antimicrobial compounds it make uh, perfect sense uh, when we uh, see the things from pathogen perspective but why plant facilitate the pathogen this pathogen not only share nutrients with it but are but at the end of the day 
cause disease in it. So why a plant facilitating a microorganism which is uh, there to harm it? Do you not think we sometimes also behave like plants? Uh, we uh, facilitate the people uh, in our daily life uh, who at the end of the day harm us. But why are we facilitating them? Because we trust them and they dodge us. I know you are get bored. Uh, nobody feel happy after listing such a heavy stuff. So this picture I put uh, so that you become relaxed. Uh, these kids are bored uh, after listing uh, this gentleman. And I hope not you. By the way, uh, do you recognize this person? This is uh, David Cameron, the ex prime minister of uh, UK. But even the students get bored by the prime minister when he become a teacher. So I can take little bit leverage. Pathogen only attack those plants which are in its host range. So what is the host range? Host range uh, is, a, is a group of plants on which pathogen can attack and it can cause the disease. Every pathogen has its own host range. Usually the biotroph host range is uh, small while the necrotrophs host range is much bigger but not the absolute one. Um, many of you are now helping your families uh, at home uh, in the villages and you notice that there is rust disease on the leaf on the wheat plant but do you see this rust disease on the other plants belonging to different families going growing ar around the wheat i guess not so the host range of this rust is wheat not the citrus not the chickpea not the brassica not the apple and many more plants so uh, which thing determines the host range the compatibility the compatibility between the host and the pathogen if they are compatible then the pathogen can cause the disease and if they are not compatible then the plant become resistant now we come to the final part of the inoculation is and that is the attachment but again there is a debate among the plant pathologists uh, some people say that the pathogen first attach with the host and then it recognizes it while the other group say the pathogen first recognizes its host and then attach it uh, this debate is not ending and this debate is uh, quite similar uh, whether hen came first or the egg hen or egg or hen so i don't want to spin your heads more and come back what is the attachment in case of attachment if each and every uh, pathogen has its own strategy uh, the fungus spore when usually falls on the leaf and the conditions are suitable it germinate and the hyphae come out and with these with the help of these hyphae it anchor on the plant uh, whether it is a leaf or a bark uh, in case of bacteria when it fall on its potential host it produces a gummy like structure due to the presence of polysaccharides and these polysaccharides help the bacteria to attach on the potential host in case of the nematodes they move uh, they usually uh, move to the underground parts of the plant and then attaches uh, with this underground part of the plant but what about the virus virus uh, don't have any kind of uh, hyphae or polysaccharide uh, to attach itself with the host plant. It just have a nucleic acid and protein coat. Viruses protein coat help them to attach but not with the plant but the insect vector. And later this insect vector directly drop the virus inside the host cell 
so viruses don't need to attach themselves uh, with the plant so at the attachment the process of inoculation is almost completed so take home message from today's talk is very simple that inoculation is the first serious interaction between the host and the pathogen which can lead to the disease uh, we already know that the pathogenesis itself is the second uh, step uh, in any plant pathology study and the inoculation is the first uh, step in in the pathogenesis so here i finish my today's talk uh, and a very good news for you and the news is that uh, that the scientist few years back uh, discovered that it was actually egg came first not the hen but what about the fire and smoke uh, fire came first or smoke or fire until you find your answers bye